Shalom, everyone, and Rosh Chodesh Adar Sameach. Um, it's actually Rosh. It's actually Adar one. This year we get uh, Adar one and Adar two. Um, why do we get Adar? Why do we get two months of Adar sometimes? Uh, because the lunar cycle of twelve months is shorter than the solar cycle of three hundred and sixty-five and a quarter days. So occasionally an intercalary month is added, and that is in the month of Adar. Um, I wanted to discuss something today that I actually get a lot of questions about in my line of work. It's the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. Um, actually calling it a parable is already assuming a lot, I guess. A lot of people ask me, is this a parable? Or is it, or did it actually happen? I don't want to use the word historical, but did it actually happen? Uh, you'll remember that the rich man, the parable, or the, the story of the rich man and, and Lazarus from Luke 16, uh, the latter half of Luke 16, is about Lazarus who is who has sores he's outside he suffers and the rich man well he's rich so he has a pretty good life on earth i guess and then um both of them die and the rich man goes to a a place of burning and and torment and Lazarus goes to Abraham's bosom and he's comforted there. Uh, the rich man asks for a, a drop of water to soothe his thirst. Uh, he asks Abraham to send Lazarus back to earth to warn his brothers. Um, and, you know, in the end, Abraham says something like, you know, they have Torah, they have the prophets. If they don't listen to them, then even if somebody comes back from the dead, they're not going to listen to them. Um, and so the questions I usually get are, you know, is this what actually happens when someone dies? Do they either go to Abraham's bosom or to the fiery torment? Um did this actually happen or is this a parable? Um, interestingly, people don't usually ask me, whom does the rich man represent? We recognize Abraham, Father Abraham. Um, we think we recognize Lazarus. He's a New Testament biblical character, a friend of, of Yeshua, of Jesus. Um, but usually people don't ask who this rich man is. Um, so yeah, people are unsure whether this, this story of the rich man and Lazarus, whether it actually happened or whether it's only a parable with a deeper meaning. Um, typically parables don't include personal names like Lazarus and Abraham. But on the other hand, Abraham's bosom or dialogue with souls in Hades are ideas that are not attested anywhere else in the Bible. Now, plenty of Jewish sources outside of the Bible, however, indicate that these themes were common beliefs at that time, that the bosom of Abraham and the other patriarchs is the resting place for the righteous and that there was a fiery holding realm for the wicked until the final judgment. Um, if you're interested to know, those sources are, for example, the Apocalypse of Zephaniah, um, 4th Maccabees 13, and in the Talmud, Kiddushin 72b. Um, but what was, what was Yeshua's point? <clears throat> well, let's review the details. He describes the main character, the rich man, as rich. Uh, he's dressed in purple and fine linen. Sound familiar from Exodus 28? 
he's he was living in luxury. Uh, fourth, he received good things in his life. Five, he lived in his father's house. Six, he had five brothers. Seven, and they all had Moses and the prophets. Eight, and though they did not listen to them, Moses and the prophets, such that nine, they would not even repent if someone were resurrected. It's a lot of detail. This, this nine-pointed description is too detailed not to refer to someone specific. Incidentally, the, his, the Jewish historian Josephus records that Caiaphas's father-in-law, Annas, had five sons, and all of them were, they, they, were all, they all served as priests at some point. That's in um, Antiquities of the Jews, uh, book 20, I believe. Um, so rereading through these criteria reveals that Caiaphas, as the high priest, is a perfect match to the first four criteria. I mean, he, he was rich. He was dressed in purple and fine linen. He lived in luxury, and he received good things. Now, Josephus says he also fits the next two. He lived in his father's house, Annas, with five brothers, all of whom at some point served as high priest. Uh, some of them served as high priest after this parable was told, but they were still a part of the high priestly family, and there were five brothers. So it meets the criterion of this parable. Um, so the only thing left is, did he and his family refuse to believe what Yeshua was preaching even after someone was raised from the dead? And the answer is, Twice, actually. After Yeshua resurrected his friend Lazarus, instead of exhibiting personal conviction or praising God or repenting, instead, the priests collaborated to kill Lazarus. That's from John 12.10. And then the second time, after Yeshua was resurrected, their hard hearts remained unchanged as they persecuted his apostles. We see that in Acts 4. So, is the story factual or a parable? Well, yeah, both. So, it is, what it, what it did is it used the, I'll go ahead and say, uh, errant belief of a holding place for the dead that's fiery or a holding place for the dead that's Abraham's bosom. Uh, and it's actually interesting to look at the differences between what um, historical texts say about this purgatory or holding place, whatever you want to call it, and Yeshua's description of it. Uh, for example, in uh, traditionally this 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 purgatory i'll just call it a purgatory um the two chambers were separated by a river that a ferry could take you across if i guess if you uh if you were righteous enough or if you repented or something like that but also the the side with abraham and abraham's bosom was for the rich and the healthy and the righteous. And the other side, the side of torment, was the one that had the sick and the poor and the wicked. So in this paradigm, being righteous automatically means that you are healthy and rich, and being evil 
automatically means that you are poor and sickly or any combination of those. If you are sickly, then therefore you must be wicked. And if you are poor, therefore you must be wicked or something like that. So Yeshua changed the details of the story. He said, no, no, there's not a river going between these two. There's a chasm that cannot be crossed. And instead of the rich and the, and the healthy being with Abraham, Instead, they were on the other side, and it was the poor and sick Lazarus who was with Abraham on the, on the good side, as it were. Okay, but if this is a parable, is Yeshua using error to teach truth? Yeah, I think so. I mean, this wouldn't be the first time. Uh, what about when his um, opposers were saying that he was casting demons out using the powers of Beelzebub? Well, Beelzebub doesn't exist. It's a, I mean, it's a false deity. It's a, so why didn't Yeshua just correct them? No, instead, he said, if I cast demons by the power of Beelzebub, and then that's when he tells us about uh, a house set against itself will fall. Well, that's true, and that's wonderful, and that's edifying, and it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's straight from the mouth of the Son of God. But why didn't he just tell those guys there is no such thing as Beelzebub? Is he using error to teach truth? So I think that's what he's doing here, too. It isn't until uh, Greek mythology crept into Jewish mysticism or Jewish, um, Jewish thought that this whole idea of the bosom of Abraham and the, um, and the fiery holding cell crept into Jewish thought. Uh, so, yeah, it was, it was probably error, and Yeshua used it to teach truth. Well, what's the truth? If this is a parable, then what's the truth to be learned here? Well, within context, Yeshua was saying, hey, you know that rich guy? The one dressed in purple and fine linen has the Torah uh, and the prophets, has five brothers. Anyone standing around would have known whom he was referring to. The high priest. Caiaphas. So in context, Yeshua was making a prophecy that Caiaphas and the whole high priestly family was not going to repent, even if somebody rose from the dead, came back and wrote, uh, rose from the dead and came back and warned them. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened, both in the case of Lazarus and in the case of Yeshua. Um, but the other part of this parable is a warning to repent while you still have time. To, if you're doing what's right, if you're doing what's right, wonderful. But if you're doing what's wrong, um, you don't know when the angel of death is going to carry you away to the purgatory, uh, the fiery side of the purgatory. And at that time, you won't be able to um, get back out or send a message to your family members or or even get a drink of water. Yeah, Yeshua was using error to teach a truth. And the truth is, repent while it is still called today. Um, so anyway, I hope you all find that interesting. It's a, uh, it's a question that I get a lot, and hopefully you find it edifying. Um, I want to wish everybody again, Rosh Chodesh Adar 1. Sameach. Lehitraot. Bye.